Hello, and welcome to the channel where, as you can tell by the title, I'm going to be ranking every season of Modern Doctor Who from uh, Series 1 to Series 14. Um, because, well, that's what I've done for the 60th anniversary. I revisited the show, kind of. You know, uh, last year I did a review of Series 11, 12, and Flux, as well as the specials. That came out of the Jodie Whittaker era. I also then went back for series one. And um, then it was this year that I'd done series two to ten. And uh, yeah, I, since this is coming out in December, uh, the only thing left really outside of the newer stuff that's coming out, which as of recording this, uh, this is before Wild Blue Yonder came out of the 60th anniversary triple episodes. So I don't know what my opinions of that are. And I won't know what my opinions of... Uh, the giggle is until uh, this the the ninth of of this month. Um, so yeah. Anyway, with that being said, uh, a lot of my opinions have definitely changed through this rewatch because a lot of the episodes that I watched uh, were first time rewatches since the episode aired. Um, you know, it could be an episode that I watched that I just did not like, did not want to return to, but I f inadvertently forced myself for these videos. And my opinions definitely changed on a lot of episodes. My opinions definitely changed on a lot of seasons. So with that being said, let's get started going from worst to best. Uh, so the worst series of Doctor Who isn't a Jodie Whittaker uh, series. No, it's actually series seven of Doctor Who. Matt Smith's third series, third and final series as the Doctor. Um, see, it also sees, you know, the departure of Amy and Rory in the first five episodes. And then uh, bringing on Jenna Coleman as Clara for the rest and on until, until series nine. And yeah, so... Why is Series 7 at the bottom of the list for me? Well, there's a lot wrong with this series. The, the, the main one being the fact that it split the seasons into, like, Series 6. Whereas Series 6 had a half-assed excuse. There was a proper excuse for this. You know, Moffat was the showrunner of the show. He was, you know, trying to oversee... Uh, series 7, as well as all of the stuff that was coming out for the show's 50th anniversary uh, the following year. So that's why it was split into two, um, with the first five episodes airing in 2012, and then the rest airing in 2013, which rubbed me the wrong way when it first came out, so that also tainted it. The other thing that is why I have it so low is... Series 7B in in total, not that great. There, there's a lot of episodes that a lot of people love, The Rings of Akaten, to, to say, uh, to give an example. And I just don't like those episodes. Uh, I don't like a lot of the episodes of Series 7B. You know, The Bells of St. John, I did like on rewatch. It was the first time I rewatched it since uh, 2013. Um... But, yeah, it just... Series 7B is what dragged it down. Series 7A wasn't all that great, you know? I still enjoyed it. Um, a hell of a lot more on this rewatch, you know? I don't... You know, I enjoyed... I've always enjoyed Asylum of the Daleks. I always thought it was a neat and interesting premise. Um, Dinosaurs on a Spaceship wasn't as bad as I remembered. Uh, Town Call Mercy was, I actually enjoyed it more on this rewatch than I did when the episode first came out. The Save of the Power 3 is, is an episode I grew to love, um, over the years. And Angel Takes Man Angel Take Manhattan is not the greatest Weeping Angel story, but it's also not the worst Weeping Angel story. Uh, so yeah, number 13 is, uh, on the list is Series 7. So, moving on to 12th place, I gave it to Series 11. So, why did I put Series 11 above Series 7? Uh, is because whilst, yes, thematically it's not great, you know, 
but I still had some enjoyment uh, when I'd done my rewatch of the show in 2021 slash 2022. Um, I definitely liked a lot of it more the only episodes that I really did not like uh is Kerblam I think that was a series what series 11 story um I also didn't like the uh spiders in the UK uh, or arachnids in the UK that's just because I'm a big you know arachnophobe I I I hate spiders I literally could not watch I, anytime one the, the big mass of fucking spider in the episode appeared or any of the spiders appeared even when that episode was coming out uh, on air day I just could not watch it because I'm just that massive of an arachnophobe um you know and then of course you know everything was like all over the place you know started off great with uh the woman who fell to earth that was a really solid opener um I definitely my favorite episode is it takes you away I really enjoyed that episode um I thought it was you know an interesting premise maybe because when that episode came out it was not it was literally just a few months after my mother died so that kind of resonated with me on that one on that wavelength which is why I enjoyed it more um but yeah I it's it's all right it's not the worst but it's you know it's all right so above it I gave it to series 12 um, because in my video that I've done for, for the Jodie retrospective, um, I basically uh, said that the first four episodes were crap and that the, that the only saving grace really of the first five episodes was uh, the fact that it a brought Jack back and B introduced us to the Ruth Doctor, you know, starting on the whole timeless children aspect of or the timeless child aspect of the show, which kind of was teased in one episode of series 11. Um, and then immediately got a massive payoff in, in the next season. I still think he should have, you know, dragged it out for another season, you know, build it up properly instead of just doing it and having it had one mention one or two mentions in the previous season and then just gone full force in this one anyway uh they all he also you know brought back the master and i hate him i hate him i i don't like sasha dewan's master i really really don't uh he's just a poor imitation of john sims that's my honest opinion on him he's literally a poor imitation of john sims um and as well you know spyfall parts part two is essentially the sound of drums, but worse. Uh, but you know, I my favorite episode of series twelve is the haunting of Villa Dad Dati. I, I butchered that because it made the Cybermen scary. And as I said, uh, I like the design of the the new design of the Cybermen uh, that they introduced. Uh, but yeah, also destroying Gallifrey again. I don't know how I feel about that. You know, the fact that I, I don't, I didn't mind that I was gone in from when, in the first era of Russell. That's because that's what I got him to show. I wasn't familiar with classic Doctor Who, so that didn't necessarily bother me. Um, I thought it was all right that, you know, uh, Moffat brought them back, but I also felt that that kind of cheapened the Doctor's character moving forward. Um, and then just for Chibnall to say, oops, nope, sorry, Time Lords are gone. Doctor's back to being the last of the Time Lords yet again. It is just, I, I just didn't like that. So yeah, in 11th, I get 11th spot, I give it to series 12. Moving on to the 10th place. Um, gonna get a lot of flack for this, but it's series two. Yes, series two really did not like on on rewatch early on this year mainly because of the doctor and rose i really don't like them i like on this rewatch it made me hate rose i used to be a massive fan of rose tyler growing up i loved her and i loved david tennant and her together but as i grew older i really started to not like rose in series two i love her in series one she's great in series one and she's 
all right in series four. Um, and then she doesn't, she hasn't really returned since. I know she kind of returned as in the form of the bad wolf from the moment in the 50th anniversary, but that's, that's about it. But yeah, it's, it's mainly the Doctor and Rose relationship that I really don't like about the series. Uh, grew to actually finally, you know, actually say that I love, love and monsters. Uh, it's not as, it's not a bad story. It, it, I mean, it is. Uh, but that's Doctor Who in a nutshell, you know, it's campy, it's, it's weird, it has this weird monster that was designed by a kid, that's Doctor Who in a nutshell, uh, so, but, you know, Series 2 does have one of my favourite episodes, and that is The Impossible Planet and the Satan Pit, that episode, that two-parter has always stuck with me ever since 2006, and it, that's why it's, you know, one of my favourite episodes, so yeah, moving on to number 9, I gave it to series three, a series that I called forgettable. Yes, uh, in my opinion, series three, kind of really forgettable. Also, Martha, massively, massively underrated. You know, that I don't know what Russell was thinking when he was coming up with the character of Mar Martha, you know, continuing on the love uh, the, that the companion falls in love with the doctor. That I hated, Mar Martha deserves deserved better and in a sense she did get better in series four not so much in torchwood but that's mainly because she wasn't really all there that much she had the whole episode dedicated to her but then she was kind of just in a few scenes in the two other episodes two episodes that came out after that uh in torchwood um but yeah if it wasn't for the fact of blink and uh the master return the master three-parter as well as bringing jack back uh series three would go massively forgotten well i almost forgot to loop in another one of my favorite episodes uh that saves it being the family of blood two-parter um because that is one of my absolute favorite episodes you know um that's a reason it's in my top five but yeah series three is just that bit forgettable uh, I hate the 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 characterization that Russell gave to Martha. He could have done something different, done something better, but no, he had to go with the love struck companion role again. And but this time the doctor's oblivious. Like that I just that's why I didn't like most of series three. Um but yeah, moving in on to number eight, I give it to series eight. Uh, yeah, I gave series eight, number eight to series eight because on my rewatch, it's not all that great. You know, there are some good episodes in series eight, and I love Capaldi. You know, Capaldi's my favorite modern doctor out of all of Doctor Who. Um, but then again, as you know, I've, I've often said my favorite doctor is Tom Baker. Uh, but yeah, I definitely changed my, my tune on series eight. Um, on this rewatch, you know, I have some good episodes and it gives us Missy, you know, I love Michelle Gomez as, as Missy, uh, I think she's fantastic, um, but yeah, Clara, it's Clara, Clara's what, oh, is another annoying thing, you know, she had the whole impossible girl part to her character story and then it's just this love triangle with, uh, I say love triangle, but it's not really a love triangle. It's she's trying to have the best of both worlds, you know, traveling with the doctor whilst also having a love life with Danny Pink. Don't get me wrong, I love Danny Pink. Um, you know, he's not afraid to call the doctor out on his shit as a former soldier. Um, but yeah, not the greatest uh, moments for Clara. Uh, it's again where I start to really not like her, uh, but that's not until series nine that I really do not like her. Um, but as well, then of course you know Martha, you can't let things alone. She was going to leave in series eight, the series eight finale, Dark Water, um, or Death in Heaven, one of the two. I forget. I think it was Death in Heaven. Uh, was the episode twelve of series eight, um, and then. You know, he convinced her to do the Christmas special. And then she's going to leave after the Christmas special. Then he convinced her to do another series. And then, thank God, she actually said, I'm done. Um, but, yeah. 
Series 8, I mean, I, like I said, I love Capaldi. But it could have been better. Uh, so yeah, moving on to number 7. Another one that I'm going to get slated for. Uh, on my ranking, I gave it to Series 4. Yeah, Series 4, not even in the top 5. Uh, at least it made the top 10. Yeah, at least it made the top 10. Please don't kill me. Yeah, so why did I put Series 4 at number 7? And the honest answer is, when I rewatched it, it's kind of overrated. Like, everyone always says Series 4 is one of the best eras of Doctor Who. Now, I'm lumping in, you know, the 2009 specials here with Series 4. Um, and overrated. I, don't get me wrong, I love Tennant and I love Donna in Series 4. I'm still a bit iffy on uh, after Wild Blue Yonder, because again, while, as I'm recording this, Wild Blue Yonder, not Wild Blue Yonder, uh, the Star Beast is the only episode that I've seen of the 60th. Um, but yeah, it's it's vastly overrated. It has one of my most controversial opinion episode not liking in it. That being Midnight. Every time I've said to other Doctor Who fans that are not a part of you know the the main YouTube circle that I'm a part of that I really don't like Midnight, I get rinsed for. It. I get yelled at like you're you, you just don't understand it no i understand it i just don't like it you know and apparently that's sacrilegious to say midnight is uh a bad episode the same way it's sacrilegious to say series four is overrated which it is people are just blinded by their nostalgic glasses i managed to take mine off to, and i've seen that it's you know overrated it's uh it's good, it's brilliant, but it's also a tiny bit overrated. So with that being said, what's what do they put above Series 4? Uh, I put Series 6. Now, for the longest time, I hated, absolutely hated Series 6. Until I rewatched it, uh, and I found myself enjoying it more than, than I did when it was coming out in 2011. You know, um, it was the first season to have the a split, uh, with and it actually, you know, had again another mid series finale where series seven had the Angel Takes Manhattan, uh, series six had the brilliant and fantastic A Good Man Goes to War, like A Good Man Goes to War is definitely one of my favorite episodes of series six, like it's Matt Smith is absolutely amazing in that episode. Um, the same with Rory, uh, he, Arthur Darville, done phenomenal as Rory in that episode. But yeah, you know, I, 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 I grew to like it that bit more. So that's why I put it at number six. So at number five, I gave it to series nine. Now I know I just said early on in this video that I really do not like Clara. So then why did I put series nine up so, f so high? And there's only one correct answer for that. And that's the fact that Clara actually dies in this episode. Kind of. You know, they, they, they do some wibbly wobbly shit in uh, Hell's Bend. But despite that, there's some really good episodes in this. You know, Under the Lake, Before the Flood, uh, The Zygon Invasion and Inversion. Um, and then, of course, Heaven Sent. All are fantastic episodes. And, you know, I didn't really mind the uh, Shielder ones. Um, but they kind of got, you know, I really do not like her character. Like, again, nothing against Maisie Williams and nothing against Jenna Coleman. It's just the characters that they played weren't the, weren't the best. They weren't the greatest. Um, and especially, like I said, in Series 9, Clara gets become the most insufferable companion out there. Uh, but still, it has her death, and that's what kind of saves it, and that's why I have it so high. That's a joke. It's actually because of Under the Lake Before the Flood, and Saigon Invasion Inversion, and Heaven Sent. I mean, Heaven Sent alone 
makes Series 9 an A-tier season. Um, so yeah, that's, that's why I put Series 9 at number 5. So, my fourth spot, I was hemming and hawing about for quite a while. So I wasn't sure what one I was going to put. And it's actually a Jody season. Yeah, I, I put a Jody season up really, really high. And that series 13 Flux. So why did I put Flux here? The honest answer is because I enjoyed it. I really did enjoy it when it first came out. And I was saying it to a friend as this was coming out. Like, I, 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 we were talking about each episode uh, as it aired. And I was like, wow, this has been the most excited I've been for Doctor Who in some time. Because I went into Flux with zero expectations after the shitstorm of the last, the series 11 and 12. I mean, yeah, it doesn't have the greatest of resolutions. Um, and I'm also, uh, with Flux, I'm lumping in uh, Eve of the Daleks, Legends of the Sea Devil, and Power of the Doctor, even though Eve of the Shite as I refer to it, is god-awful, uh, which a lot of people seem to love. Um, and maybe I just need to give it another rewatch. And uh, Legend of the Sea Devil, which was originally going to be, you know, Jodie's Regeneration episode until we got the Power of the Doctor, which, to be honest, again, I haven't rewatched Power of the Doctor, a Legend of the Sea Devil, or even the Daleks since it aired last year. Uh, but the Power of the Doctor was still a fantastic episode that I really really enjoyed granted i will have to rewatch it for a video idea that i have planned for the new year but i'll get to that eventually so with that being said what's my top three well i my number three i gave it to series 10 i love series 10 series 10 of doctor who is capaldi's best season Bill is a fantastic and phenomenal uh, companion, and it's near perfect. I'm I'm not gonna lie, it's near perfect. You know the pilot is great, smile not so much, thin ice, uh, is pretty good. Knock knock, not the greatest, um, but not the worst. Um, oxygen, absolutely fantastic. Uh, the what, what, what am I missing here? There's so many other good ones. Especially my all-time favourite episode to have ever come out of the modern series of Doctor Who being World Enough in Time slash The Doctor's Falls. It's the whole fucking reason I went out and bought uh, the Doctor Who monthly magazine was to get that poster because I love that story so much. It is the best Series finale of Doctor Who, and in my opinion, if Doctor Who was going to have an endpoint, that would have been the perfect one. And I still have yet to make a video on that because I keep, I've been saying ever since I started this channel, I've been making mention on that, you know, for the past two years, and I still haven't done it. I will in the new year, I promise, hopefully. Uh, but yes, World Enough in Time, The Doctor Falls is the greatest Cyberman story ever told in modern Doctor Who. Um, but yeah, series 10, fantastic. I love Bill. I love Capaldi. I love Nardal. He, he, I, you know, he, I wasn't too keen on him in the beginning of when it first was coming out. Uh, but I didn't mind him so much on this rewatch. Uh, he's not the all, you know, Matt Lucas isn't all that bad. But yeah, series, series 10 is definitely top three worthy. Uh, but it couldn't be number one because the next two easily dethrone it. So in second place, I gave it to series one because series one to me is a near perfect season. You might say that there's a lot more bad episodes than that, that I would, but that's because of the one thing I always make mention, and that is, I love the Slidine two-parter. You know, Aliens of London and World War Three. I absolutely love and I absolutely adore it. Why? Because when I got into Doctor Who, uh, my mother went out and bought me Series 1, Volume 2 of Doctor Who. And on that disc had three episodes. 
World War III, Aliens of London, I got those two mixed up, and Dalek. And that's why those three are some of my most... I, I would... I, the amount of scratches I put on that disc from constantly re-watching those three episodes. Because that's all I had at the time until Series 2 came out. Um, that was all... That's how I got my Doctor Who fix. That's how I fell in love with Christopher Eccleston as the Doctor. Because I my first story, full story... As I've made mention is um, Christmas Invasion. Uh, I've seen bits of Father's Day and the Parting of Ways, but I would rewatch the these three episodes over and over and over and over again, and I would never get tired of it. And that's why they're some of my favorite episodes of series one, as well as that it had a fantastic two parter, as uh, two part finale of. Bad Wolf and um, The Parting of Ways. I know Danny over at Physical Media Life made a video talking about how he didn't like Bad Wolf. I think it's a great episode, you know. Yes, a lot of the TV shows that they make reference is heavily outdated. But it's the build-up to the reveal that it's the Daleks that are back. It's the Daleks that are behind it all is amazing and then seeing the doctor say no to them at the end of the episode is honestly amazing you know once he finds out you see the fear and you see the anger in him because once again he thought he had defeated them he thought that he was done with the time war but no the daleks always survive they're kind of like the william afton of uh, from the Five Nights at Freddy's series, they're, they're kind of like the William Afton of the Doctor Who universe. You think they're gone, but they always come back. Um, so yeah, Series 1 is a near-perfect season, in my honest opinion. Um, the only two episodes out of the 13 that let it down is The End of the World and The Long Game. Those are the only two episodes that I really do not like about that. Um about series one that stops it from being a near perfect season so due to process of elimination that means my number one spot goes to series five why it's a perfect season again there will be people that will say but this episode sucks and this episode sucks and you're in your right to say so but when i rewatched series five I loved it. It is the greatest series of Doctor Who from start to finish. I love the 11th hour. It's a fantastic episode. I fell in love with the Beast Below. Uh, it's a really, really good episode. It's a really good character uh, arc for for Amy. You know, her first proper trip in the TARDIS. Um, I love, you know... The uh, victory of the Daleks. I, I love the paradigm Dalek design. I really do wish we got to see more of this design. But no, because the fans, other fans hated the design and wanted to go back to the bronze design, that's the, they weren't given a chance. They Unfortunately, the paradigm Daleks wasn't given a chance. I really wish they would have been because they had their own designations. Uh, and it would have been very interesting to see how all that played out. And then again, the Pandora opens uh, and the Big Bang are is one of, uh, well, the second best series finale of Doctor Who. Uh, obviously, World Enough in Time and The Doctor Falls is my favourite. But yeah, that has been my reasonings behind all the placements of all 13 seasons of Doctor Who prior to series 14 coming out next year. So let me know what you think and let me know what your rankings are in the comments below. So thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And as I said, for the rest of this month, uh, essentially I'll, I'll be covering the, the Christmas specials that I never got to cover. Um, so yeah, I'll catch you all next time.